Welcome to SparkFX version two. Do you ever want to put multiple clips on the screen at the same time? Today, I'm going to show you just a few of the new updates to the SparkFX app, um, including this new layout feature, as well as a lot more. It's actually super easy, and I created this entire layout for the intro with all the animations in just a few minutes. You can use the layouts with a few clips, or you can go crazy and add a lot of clips in with all kinds of different possibilities. So what is SparkFX? It's the ultimate add-on tool for workflow automation in DaVinci Resolve. It allows you to edit smarter, faster, and create dynamic content. This includes spell check, text alignment tools, a quick search, instant icons, effects plugins, animations, as well as some smart editing tools. SparkFX is the tool that you need to be a more effective video editor. With Preview 2, we've packed in a ton of great new features. Um, once the app is fully released, I'm gonna do detailed walkthroughs of all of the features so you can see exactly how to use them. Okay, so what's in Preview 2? We've enhanced the search to make it easier to find text, markers, clips, or anything across all your projects. Type in what you're looking for and jump directly to it with just a few keystrokes and you're ready to start editing. Spellcheck has been upgraded to offer search suggestions and you can also fix up the spelling with inside the SparkFX app. Push one button and your entire timeline, all the spelling will be fixed so you don't have to go to each of the text components and edit them individually. The text edit feature now has a search replace and this is uh, one of you guys requested it. I thought it was a great idea. So you bring up all the text from your timeline and if you want to fix or change one word you type it in and it's going to be replaced all across your timeline, across all the instances of text clips, fusion animations, or any of that. All right, smart audio. Have you ever wanted to automatically set up sounds for clips, effects, transitions, and spe special events within your timeline? Well, that's what smart audio does. You create a profile, assign sounds to different transitions or effects or clips, push a button, and those sounds are automatically added and sequenced in your timeline. With smart titles, you can really focus on your editing. All you need to do is put a marker in or an indicator of where you want titles to appear. Keep on editing. Don't worry about setting up all the text. Once you're done and those markers are in place, select your title style, push a button, and titles are automatically added into your timeline at all the places that you indicate. Smart media works just like the smart audio. You add markers and indicators onto your timeline where you want certain media to appear. Keep editing. Don't worry about it. You say you want a B-roll clip of some clouds. Just put in B-roll clip of clouds. You bring up the smart media, it's going to bring up a list of all the media that you're wanting to add to your timeline, which is really convenient. So you see it all there. Then you can click the uh, use the search button. You can load an image or search for a, um, a clip. You can download it from the internet and then push a button and all of the media is automatically added into your timeline at the places where you're looking for it. Working with text is kind of a challenge in Resolve. That's where I've created this new bullet list feature. Um, I've done several bullet lists, but I think really by far this is the best one I've done. It's all done from the timeline. You add your text in. You can edit the text all in one list within the SparkFX app, change styling, adjust the position and alignment of all the clips, as well as the spacing. Update media bins. This is a new feature, and this is something I'm going to be using for a new feature that's coming, but right now it's just a quick way to pull up a bin in Resolve and quickly change the clip name or description. You just Type it, you hit enter, go to the next, enter, go to the next. Really quick to set the uh, the names for all your clips. And finally, there's the Spark layouts, which you've been seeing all throughout this intro, where you can create customized layouts and animate everything. Um, you want to put different clips in different areas, move it around. It's really, you can have build whatever you want. To download and start exploring all the great things you can do with SparkFX, go to sparkfxstudio.com and click the download link. This video is just going to cover some of the new stuff. There's a lot more to it. So you can, um, there's a link in the description for the, uh, the uh, first Spark, Spark FX preview video. You can click that if you want to learn more about some of the basic and core features. Okay, let's take a look at how to use Spark FX layouts to set up some layouts, customize them, and then we're going to set up some really interesting animations. Let's start with a three clip layout. First step is to add the clips to your timeline. Next, trim the clips to where they're about the same size. It's not necessary, but it makes things a little bit easier. Place the playhead over the clips and start Spark FX. Click Create, and then choose the Spark Layouts option. We'll shrink it to make it a little bit smaller here. And you'll see that uh, SparkFX found that there's three new clips, and this is where we can adjust our layout. We're gonna start pretty basic, um, just a, uh, a three by three grid, and we'll hit Add Clips. SparkFX Layouts makes it really easy to identify clips and find what you're looking for. You'll see in the timeline, um, we have each of our clips, they're colored and they have a number. So if, for example, if you wanted to update clip number one, you can see it's, it's the uh, orange color here. So we just click it. And then in the inspector, we can uh, move it around and make some adjustments. So it's really easy to find. And also because each of these clips is in the timeline um, separately, it makes it really easy to adjust timing. Let's adjust the layout here. Obviously we can change the grid. So if we had a bigger grid, this would be 36 clips, which is a lot. Um, you hit update and you can see it moves the clips around. In this case, let's make it a, uh, I'm gonna make a one by three grid. And if we wanted to change that, we could make it a three by one. 
So it's really quick and easy to adjust the, the layouts. Now let's see if we want to move these clips around. Let's, uh, we're going to create a little, a bigger grid here, um, like that we'll update. And that's what these icons are for here. So this, this, the first icon allows you to create the layout. The second icon allows you to move the clips around and make adjustments. So for example, if we wanted to swap the position of the uh, clip number one and three, we would click on one and click three, and it's going to swap the position. Maybe we wanted to move clip three down to the bottom right and clip one down to the bottom left. Then this, uh, there's some options to adjust the clip size and the reset clip order. So let's go ahead and reset the clip order and that's gonna put them back into the one, two, three positions. Okay, let's add some more clips in here. I'm gonna take this and set this window to be on top so we always have it available. I'm gonna just drag some more clips into the timeline and we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna um, cut these a little bit and just trim them up. We have three new clips added to the timeline and we wanna put them into our layout. So what we're gonna do is click the layout button right here and then hit the plus button to add clips to the layout. Yeah, you, see it, you can see it found three clips and all we have to do is hit add clips. And we have a one through six and we can do the same thing if we wanted to do a, a one by six there, we just hit update, three by two. Really quick to make some adjustments here. Once you're ready, you can um, take off the numbers in the identification by just unchecking this identify box. We had a few more options in here. We can adjust the margins. And we can add a, a corner radius as well as um, a little bit of framing. Okay, let's let's talk about um, some basic animations here. Um, you notice that all of, because these are in the timeline, if we want to adjust the timing, we just slide them around. So we've sli we just kind of slide them around and we've created a uh, kind of a little quick pop-in effect. I'm going to reset this and show you how to use some of the built-in resolve transitions to create some really interesting looks. So what we're going to do is go to effects and hit uh, video transitions and let's scroll down. We're just going to pick something. Let's try, um, let's try this radial transition. So we're just going to take that and drag it onto our first clip and you'll see what it does. It kind of slides it in like that. Real nice effect. I'm just going to add this to the other clips real quick. You could be using the push transition, the up down. You could even be using um, you know, any any really kind of effect you can add. All right, that looks great. Really, uh, really quick kind of a fun slide in intro. All right, so let's do some customized layouts. We're going to go back to Spark FX and hit custom. Change layout. And this is going to allow us to actually create a custom unique layout. We're just going to take the grid size and bump it up to 12 by 12. And all you need to do is draw your layouts. So we're going to create uh, that section one. It kind of goes in order. That's two, three, four. Um, we'll do five right there. And then we'll just do six. So there's going to be a hole right here where there's not a clip. And we could add one in there later if we wanted to. Now that we have that set up, all we need to do is hit update. And we have our new grid. Let's uh, let's do another one. So we're gonna hit custom again. It's gonna change the layout. We're gonna reset it. And I'm just drawing in uh, six boxes there and we're gonna hit update. And we have a really nice layout and this works with the animation that we set up. All right, I'm gonna delete these animations and I'm gonna show you how to do some custom animations using the uh, animations that are built into the SparkFX layout. So we're gonna take all the clips and kind of put them um, in line in the timeline. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit this uh, play button, which is an animation button. There's a, you can animate things in, you can anim animate them out. You can also completely change the layout and have clips move and resize into new positions. It looks really great. So let's just start with animate in and the default, you can set the duration and the delay between each of the clips, a clip order, animation slide and scale and fade. So we're just going to use the default and hit animate. And let's take a look. Uh, let's change it up real quick to show you how some of the options work. We're going to do um, random. I'm going to bring the delay down between the clips, and we're going to speed it up just a bit. You can click these to toggle them. And we're going to do a slide all directions, so it's going to slide in left, right, up, down, and we're going to take off the scale and the fade. And we'll click animate, and it's going to reset the animation for us. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a custom animation with a completely new grid layout. So what you want to do is you want to go to the point in the timeline where you want that animation to start. So we'll pick this area right here, select the timeline and then do a cut. And what that does is that actually creates new clips and it kind of locks in the first animation. So we're going to start animating this next, next set of clips after the cut. So we're going to go back. We could, we could do animate out, we could do things, but we're going to do animate layout. And we're going to go start with a blank layout. 
and this works just the same. You can draw on your layout. So we're going to have um, clip one there. Two is going to go here. We'll have three, four, five, and six. There's a duration and a delay just like before. Clip order, and we're going to hit animate. Now the nice thing is because these are on the timeline, we can fix some of these issues. So for example, here we want maybe we want that the clouds to actually stay on top and then slide over. So to fix this, let's uh, turn back on our identify. And you see the clouds are the blue clip right here. Really easy. And we just got to take it and we're going to drag it up and put it on top. And we'll turn that off. All right, let's do one more. We're going to do a, we're going to make a cut. We're going to make a cut across all the clips and go to this new section and change layout. We're going to go to a blank layout and we're going to just draw some stuff in here. And once we like it, let's make, actually, let's have all these go at the same time. So we're going to put the, uh, the delay to zero and hit animate. And then maybe we just want some clips to swap. So let's go ahead and make another cut to lock in that section. And we'll go to here, click on a clip and say we want clip number five. And we maybe want that to go to section three. So it's going to swap those two. And let's have uh, clip four go to section one. All right, so we did that and we're going to hit back and hit animate and it's just going to swap those clips real quick. And let's put a little more, let's put a delay back in there a little bit and we're going to speed it up. And we're just kind of playing around here. We're going to make another cut to lock in that section. And then if you want everything to go back to normal, hit change layout and hit default layout and hit animate. And that's going to send all the clips back to where they started. And last thing is we're going to make a cut, hit the back button, and we're going to just say animate out, and let's just have them fade out. So we're going to take the scale off, and they're going to fade, and hit animate. That's the basic setup of the SparkFX layouts. You can create a grid, you can design your own layout, set up animations, or you can use the timeline to animate and adjust clip timing. So you can use the profiles to actually save this. So if you set up your own layouts, own animations, you can reuse them over and over again by saving them as a profile. And there's also gonna be a layout option where there's gonna be some pre-built layouts and animations once this is fully done. So you'll be able to select that and quickly set up any kind of layout and animate it. Again, it's all done from the timeline, so it's really easy to manipulate and shift things around. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I'd really like to get your feedback. Give the app a try and let me know what you think. If you want it to do something, if you're looking for some new features, if something doesn't work right, let me know so I can get it fixed up and make this the uh, best app possible. I really appreciate everyone's support. I'm going to be doing a few more, uh, few more videos and then we're going to get this app ready to launch so that you can start using it for real.